Come on, Don, I'm waiting for it. I was gonna have a joke prepared and everything, but apparently he didn't want to give me it. <sighs> anyway, hey, what's up, my dokus? Jason here, looking at back to more. He's a lacrimosa of Donna. Last time, we headed into Donna's past to do things that we had not done up to this point. C coming in the form of different little quests, as well as... Of course she interrupt me in my intro. Um, whether they were little quests or... Um, the sanctuary crept, because we also came down here and completed the Chamber of Frost. But this time... Well, we're actually going to be heading back to Adol's era. Why? Well, because we still have to go one other place in order to complete everything in Donna's past. Which, if we look at all these, we're doing pretty good. And right here, we have the Chamber of Frost open door waiting for us. So, let's head into the past. Alrighty, back here in the uh, Sanctuary Crypt, gonna go ahead and go to the Chamber of Frost. Actually, no, wait, first, actually. Um, I want to check something. Which areas don't have all the chests? Uh, the Chamber of Stone, there's a place we haven't explored yet. Uh, that's it. Okay, so I actually want to head back to the Chamber of Stone. And the reason being, obviously, because there's this whole other area that we couldn't explore yet because we did not have the, um... We did not have the Luminous ability. And by doing so, or at least having it, we can hit these switches. We actually could just get over here in the first place because we couldn't do that when we were here previously. And... We have kind of a whole other section opened up. Yep, right here. Which makes sense. They kind of got to mirror the other side. Oh, it's another one of these rooms. It's another one of these rooms where I believe we can only screw up once. Well, actually, we can only screw up four times. This is not looking too good. Yeah, we... Mm, I think we need a different path. Try this path. Yeah, that's not going to work either. Hmm. I was trying to see if I could jump on that, but it's not a it doesn't have friction on it, so it's not going to work. Hmm, how am I going to go about doing this? Let me try this. Um... Let's see. 
Actually, try this. Go up here. Go up there. That works. That gets us in here. Where we can get Dervish Hairpin. Yeah, we're gonna need to equip that later on. Uh, but I guess let's go ahead and return back to the Chamber of Frost and check out the new area. All right, new door. It's time for you to open. Welcome to the Chamber of Magma. Alrighty, starting off here, we have actually a chest somewhere. It's probably on the lower floor. Or lower down. And I was correct. You need to be careful. <laughs> I like how she says good heavens. That is like something I've never heard. Or at least I haven't heard in a long time. Ooh, look at that. We got a level up. I'm not even kidding. Like, literally that's something I have not heard in a very long time. It was used back in the olden days. Even though I'm, you know, 21 and... This is not clearly not the olden days. I was not. I was born in 2000, so that's clearly not the olden days. I can at least say I was uh, born in the olden days of technology. I mean, my papa still has a computer from when I was a kid. That's like was class like Windows 7 or like Windows uh, SP or XP, and that's like one of the earliest versions of Windows, I believe. I could be wrong, but I'm just saying. It's just crazy how far, like, technology has come. Like, I was born back when the N64 was still a thing, and the GameCube didn't come out till like, 2001. Or, actually, actually, now that I think about it, the GameCube, I think, did release in 2000. Because I think Luigi's Mansion, because Luigi's Mansion was the launch title, and I think that released in 2000. Because Majora's Mask released, I think... A few, like a few days before my birthday or something, or... Actually, I could be wrong on that. I don't know. All I'm saying is I was born in like the weirdly, really, you know, weird part of gaming where I was born when the GameCube and the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox and all that were out. And then the next generation was the Wii. Then we had the Wii U, and then the Switch, and it's like just crazy to see how far technology's come, and you know, when, what generation we had it. Like, my brother was born in 2006, I believe? Yeah, he was born in 2006, and that was like a year before the Wii came out. So he was kind of born in the generation of the Wii, and then my little sister was born the the month or not the month uh it was born the year the week came out and then uh sadly my niece doesn't get to share a share the a year with a new console because the ps5 released in 2020 actually um <coughs> excuse me but actually I think maybe the Xbox Series X might have been released in 2019. I don't remember. Did they show it off at E3 that year? I don't know. All I know is that 2019 had like the literal best E3 ever. 2021 was is definitely like second best to me, and that's just because I think what Nintendo did with E3 was that they tried, you know, to make it a good E3 to come back on because they had 
had it, having the year before basically no D Nintendo Directs whatsoever, they really needed something to fall back on, or like they really needed to like blow us out of the water, and I think they did that with E3 2021. I honestly don't think they'll be able to top E3 2019 for a while. There was so much shown off that nobody was expecting. I mean, hell, we were never expecting a sequel to Breath of the Wild. And we're getting it. Which is, I think... Unless... Because I don't really count Majora's Mask as a sequel. I count it as its own standalone game. But... Because, like, you know, it takes place in a different time. It takes place after Ocarina of Time, but it, that, it just takes place as kind of its own separate thing in an alternate universe. And... Oh, I just completely missed a room. Hold on. Apparently, I also missed a treasure chest. Getting a lot of elixirs here. Actually, how many elixirs do I have? Oh, wow. Not that much. yeah, we're just... Oh, uh, what was I saying? I was saying something about Majora's Mask. I was, like, standalone, and now we're getting a sequel to Breath of the Wild, which I think is okay. I'm completely okay with getting a sequel to Breath of the Wild, because, honestly, Breath of the Wild was the front a lot of firsts to the series, kind of, basically. If you don't count the CDI games. Aw. But I want this chest. You can't make me give up a chest like that. How could you? Something tells me we need to like... Yeah, I have 999 essence fragments. Oh, I should just go buy items. We're just gonna have to get that chest later because I need to get items first. I don't feel like going back to this area where we were without a like reason. It's gonna pain me if the rest of the chests in this area all have, um... Like, all have a lot of essence fragments in them. But, yeah, I'm completely okay with this. Because I feel like, you know, Breath of the Wild brought a lot of firsts. It, it wasn't the first one to really be an open world game, I guess you could count. Actually, I guess you could say it was the first one, because even though, um... Even though the original Legend of Zelda was kind of an open-esque world game, it, uh, it did have its limitations. So yeah, it was kind of the first open world game in the series. Um, it brought voice acting into the series, which yes, I'm not counting the CDI games as... Uh, I'm not counting the CDI games as, you know, actual official parts of the timeline in, in the series. Those were CDI poopers. So yeah, basically the first game to br bring... Uh, voice acting into the series, and it, ju it just feels it's like the story is way better in uh, Breath of the Wild. Even in Age of Calamity, like, I honestly feel like they are just so much better there, and the reason why they're doing a sequel is because they have so many more ideas to continue this story they created with Breath of the Wild, and this is why a sequel exists. And I'm completely okay with that, because we really don't need another new Zelda game. We can just continue off the story of Breath of the Wild, because honestly, they left us on a cliffhanger. I think what they were doing was, uh, they left us on a cliffhanger to basically see how well, um, Breath of the Wild would do. See if it succeeded, which it did, and then they would start work on the sequel. That's basically how I see it. Go ahead and head through here, get our defense elixir. The essence fragments are killing me because I have 999 of them and it makes me sad. I just rush, like, go storming through this area because we can easily kill these enemies thanks to the combos we got, we have. Um. Yeah. 
You know what? Actually, I want to start a comment question. I haven't done one of these in a very long time. I'm just kind of curious. What are you guys looking forward to in Breath of the Wild 2? Um, it could be anything. It could be the story. Like, what kind of story are they going to tell that's, you know, following after Breath of the Wild 2? Uh, how are they going to bring in certain characters? How are they going to do certain things you want them to do? My curiosity will definitely be the Master Sword, because, you know, basically each Zelda game has a different way of getting the Master Sword. You don't just start off with it, and seeing as how Link has had it, uh, basically ended the game, like ended Breath of the Wild with it, it would be confusing for him, and especially in the E3. 2019 trailer, he has the Master Sword with him in the point that they showed. And so, like, I'm just curious about how the Master Sword's going to work. And there was something in E3 2021's trailer that kind of alluded to how the Master... what happens to the Master Sword, and, you know, how it would work to where, like, we'd have to re-get the Master Sword, and so the thing tells me, like, the Master Sword gets destroyed, and then you have to, like, take it to specific spots or something, maybe a la Skyward Sword, where you had to make the Goddess Sword into the Master Sword using the Sacred Flames, like maybe you have to explore the land of Hyrule and find these specific spots where you need to ask for the prayers of the Goddess or something, and like, um, and like get it repaired or something. Obviously, I believe that, because it looks like, to me, personally, I could be wrong, but it looks like Link loses his arm, and he gets, like, this cool arm with special powers, uh, in it, like, special powers, is, like, because he lost his arm, he, like, loses everything, because the other thing is that different Zelda games also start you at three hearts. Well, if you're, like, me and you 100% the game and get all, t uh, 30 hearts in the in Breath of the Wild, uh, you're not, you're gonna probably be, you know, wanting to wonder how are you gonna start with three hearts in Breath of the Wild 2, and I think it's because Link gets his arm, uh, cut off, and I think that, like, when he journeys back into Hyrule and he basically loses all of his powers that he has, like, as the spirit of the hero, and has to kind of start from scratch, basically. I don't know, that's just my theory. A game theory. I don't know why I referenced game theory, but you know, I'm just a memer. Excuse yourself, sir. Yeah, that's just my, you know, comic question for you guys. What are you guys expecting in Breath of the Wild? Or what do you want to see in Breath of the Wild 2? Because, um, I'm honestly looking forward to it. I can't wait to play it next year, and at least I'm hoping it comes out next year. I'm not, you know, gonna be upset if it doesn't, because I do think that, you know, the best games need need time. Hell, Kingdom Hearts 3, how we waited for, like, freaking eight years or something. Because it first started development in 2012, and it wasn't until 2019, which was, like, yeah, around seven years, actually. Oh, wow, we we're already at the top here. I missed a chest back there, but honestly, there's a lot of this place that we missed. And we're just gonna have to come back for it later. Actually, no, there isn't a lot of this place that we missed. Huh. I'll just come back for it later, I promise. Blas... Mipha... Blas... Blasphema... Blasphema, I think is what it's called. That's... that's kind of funny, I'm not gonna lie. It's like blasphemy. Anyway, we're gonna have to do what we usually do, which is, uh... We just weaken his shield with Gratica. Excuse yourself. There we 
go. Now we can personally wail on him. Want to try to get him down to where we can use our extra skill on him. Come on. Doesn't look, look like we can get a, uh... Doesn't look like we can get a, another... Stun on him. But that's okay, let's just use an extra skill. Oops, I need to go into there and replay that. I've almost reached the monolith. Finally, you reached the monolith, but will it activate? If the Valley of Kings is where they tried to build the villa, then the Wall of Truth must be the mural in the depths of the tomb. In the garden, must be Saren Garden. 
I'm surprised to find information about Saren Garden in this sanctuary. In olden times, people knew that the Great Tree was the cause of disasters. And those who tried to fight back against the Great Tree were... can't give up. As long as I'm still alive, Eternia has not fallen, and neither has its people. Isn't that right, everyone? It looks like the engravings on the floor. What is it on the door? What does it mean? I don't see a door leading further on, but I believe this is the final floor. This is a dead end. I have no choice but to turn back for now. And, yeah, we've already made it to the end. And with it, that is everything that we can take care of in Donna's past up till now. So, yeah, we're just going to save those for later. I'll get them a little later. I'm sorry. I guess with that, let's head back to Adol's time. And with this, that is, yeah, everything. We now have our objective before us, however, there is one last thing that we need to take care of. But I know we're not making much story progress, but trust me, we're doing this for good reasons. There is a certain place over here around the Water and Woods Hill that I have a, basically not touched since forever. Like, we we could have come here a while ago. But I say next time on Ye Say It Lacrimosa of Donna, we head here. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. Troops at a ton. Be sure to subscribe to Dibbly Dibbly if you have not already. And I'll see you guys all later.